It's Tuesday, April 24th, 2012. I'm Curtis Hollister, and you're watching The Quarter on InvestorChannel.tv. Today, we're going to be talking about GE trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol GE. And joining me is Dana Blankenhorn, a top contributor on Seeking Alpha and TheStreet.com. Dana, welcome to the show. Good to be here. So, Dana, uh, congrats on the uh, new position with uh, TheStreet.com and, and writing for those guys. How's it going so far? It's going like clockwork. <laughs> well, that, that's good, I guess. Um, so we're going to talk about GE today, and uh, they just come out with earnings that beat, beat analyst estimates by a penny, and I think they come in around $0.34 cents, um, per share. Is that right? That's right. So, I mean, they used to say what's good for GE is good for America. Is that still the case? Well, uh, the original one was what's good for General Motors. It was by Charlie Wilson, who at that time was the GM chairman. This is in the 1950s. But uh, GE is actually uh, the only company that was on the Dow 30 when it launched. It's still on the Dow 30. Mm. That's how old it was. I mean, the, this company was Thomas Edison's exit strategy. Okay? The company was formed in order to basically get him out of day-to-day -day operations of electrical stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we could, you know, do things like photographs. <laughs> Movie projectors and things like that. Anyway, um, uh, the point is, they have survived this long by giving each chairman, each generation, uh, all the time that, that, that they could, that they needed to make the company what they wanted it to be. Uh, Jeff Immelt, the current CEO, uh, became CEO on September seventh, two thousand one. He's had over ten years to turn this company uh, into something better than it was. The valuation uh, is about half of what it was when he became CEO because he has completely transformed what GE is all about. Yeah, and GE was getting you know pretty big props back in the day. Jack Welsh, as far as the best, best managed company in the world, their, their systematized approach to, to management, et cetera, Sigma Six. Um, obviously, these are still guys with some serious bench strength and their ability to kind of operate a, a monster company. Well, what Imel did is he said, we are going to be an industrial company again. We're going to make stuff. Uh, this was the first quarter uh, since Imel has been CEO that they made more money from industrial products than they did from GE Council. Mm -hmm. So that, that's an important benchmark for him. And the prospects for the company right now are pretty good. So if you can get in at less than $20 a share, you know, maybe you're going to do okay. Those of us who got in for 30 and 40 back in the day, we're still you know, not happy. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the, today's company is about uh, energy and healthcare for the most part. Those are the, those are the biggies. Uh, they are uh, big on, they, they make the jet engines. Okay. That, that's what they do the commercials about now. They make wind turbines. Uh, they've just gotten into the solar business, uh, and they make natural gas uh, uh, equipment that uh, utilities can use as uh, uh, power overnight, like when the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. So that instead of storing the solar power, they just use it when it comes on during the day, which is when the peak load is anyway. And then at night, when the solar energy goes away, they can just turn on the natural gas. Gotcha. So they, they're doing a lot of exciting and interesting things. They've plus some, a lot of plus some battery tech, obviously, as well, that they're um, are around uh, electric cars. Mm -hmm. but, right. but that's still, that's, there's, there's not a payoff from that yet. Exactly. And that's, and that's part of the problem. For instance, uh, last year, uh, Immelt decided to invest heavily in building a solar panel plant in Colorado. Now, the, the, the technology chose to use for that is cadmium telluride, the same technology the first solar makes. Well, what's happened is that the cost of polysilicon, which is what we usually think of when we think of solar panels, the cost of the raw material has plunged. And with so many big Chinese companies involved, they've been oversupplying the market. Prices have plunged. They've mm -hmm. plummeted. They've plummeted, frankly, below his cost of production. So, I mean... Although the, they've had a drop in, uh, in um, gross income, um, obviously associated with kind of some divestitures as well as, um, as well as just the economy in general, their earnings per share is, is, is maintained or gotten better than it has been historically. You know, what's, 
what's that because of? Is just just strong management, or are these guys going to be able to kind of continue to navigate through a, a completely down economy globally? And then when it comes back, are they going to be the ones that we're all looking to to, to jump on their bandwagon? That's what Ibel is better. Uh, he, uh, you know, he does have some good industrial managers. He does have good people at GE Healthcare, which is, by the way, where he made his bones in the company. He came up through GE Healthcare. Uh, he, he does have some exciting things going on in GE Energy and in industrial equipment. Um, he's betting that this turn of the economy is going to be all about making stuff. Mm -hmm. Right now, America has some significant uh, cost advantages in terms of making stuff. You know, we, uh, we have low, low, low natural gas prices, actually below production costs of natural, natural gas prices. We have abundant coal, which we're not using. Um, and uh, because we have low input costs, and we also have low taxes, and we also have uh, in, uh, labor costs that are under control because of the recession, because of all these things and, and high productivity, um, you know, this is a good place for making stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, the other thing with GE is they do pro have probably have a pretty good pulse on, on the trend around economies globally. One of the things Imolt said within his, uh, his, his latest quarterly results call was they're going to be watching Europe very carefully. And there has been quite a bit of divestiture of their um, capital division and real estate holdings out of Europe. I mean, is Europe, is Europe kind of a sunk market because GE says it is? No, Europe is a sub market because Europe is going through the same crisis that we went through in 2008. But the difference is that the solution that Europe has chosen is the uh, solution that the United States chose in 1928. Mm -hmm. uh, austerity. Uh, you know, let things go bankrupt. And uh, the Austrian school of economics. Uh, and it doesn't work. So uh, while the United States used Keynesianism, just flooding the economy with money, uh, all the things that uh, conservatives now you know, say they hate, it worked. What Europe has done hasn't worked. Yeah. What I think is happening there now is they're starting to turn through public pressure toward policies that work. Well, and, and they're getting such a cultural backlash from those decisions too. I mean, you're seeing literally people rioting in the streets um, with any kind of fiscal policy change, like there's such a, a sensitivity to it that you know, it might be another ten years before they come out of this. Well, I don't know if it'll take that long. It could snap back fairly quickly. You know, um, take Spain for instance. Spain is a really good example of, of what's gone wrong with policy. They have been cutting and cutting and cutting, and yeah, you're right. People are starting to riot in the streets, but in the meantime. Their production and their economy has gone south. They owe more now than when they started cutting. You know, at some point, the light bulb is, is going to go off in somebody's head that uh, we need to do something different. And I, I, I think the light bulb is in the process of going off in people's heads in Europe. Hmm. We need to do something different. And uh, once that turns into policy, and it'll take a couple of months, uh, I think you're going to see a change. Yeah, I mean, so let's go back to GE. We've got basically strong operational leadership, proven track record, their ability to continue to maintain basically not only a dividend but earnings per share. Um, bets on on industrial sector where they're going to be kind of the you know the pivot point globally for kind of major industrial uh, manufacturing. Um, pretty serious economic investment on large scale projects. So as they come back into the market, um, you know these big train systems, uh, people ordering more planes, et cetera, et cetera. They're going to be at the center of that. And them limiting their, their European risk. Seems like a pretty good set of uh, conditions um, for possibly entering the stock. Yes. Plus, don't forget, at current prices, you're looking at a yield that beats any government bond. Just, just raw yield. Forget about whether the stock goes up. I mean, mm -hmm. we usually talk about whether the stock goes up or down. You know, yield, the, 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 the dividend against the price, is a very important consideration to a lot of investors. And, GE is a good yielding stock. And it's a highly liquid stock, obviously, as well. Yes. I mean, it's trading anywhere from 20 to 40 million shares a day. So it's trading massive shares. It's very liquid. I think this really comes down to these guys are tied to the global economy for to a certain extent. And they've got such a good management team that once that takes off, 
there everyone's going to be writing the articles in Fast Company and, and Business Magazine X and Y about why these guys were so smart the whole time. Never mind yeah, the fact. Yeah, because you heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. Never mind the fact that they lost, you know, two hundred billion dollars basically in in market cap. That this yeah. this is all. This is what investing's all about. Yeah, market cap can come back. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add to this story, uh, Dana? Well, I own I own two hundred shares. <laughs> <laughs> Continue to load up. Continue to load up. Well, Dana, okay. thanks so much for your time. Um, and uh, if if anyone has any uh, questions, they can reach you on your blog that's on Seeking Alpha, or they can highlight some of your articles on thestreet.com. That's right. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. If you'd like more information on Dana Blankenhorn, you can check them out on Seeking Alpha. If you'd like more videos from public issuers or industry experts, you can visit InvestorChannel.tv. I'm Curtis Hollister. Thanks so much for watching The Quarter.